Have you been to an airport lately? Probably not. It seems like a lifetime ago now since we could hop on a plane at our leisure and fly off to some far-flung place for a few days of sun and relaxation. But in those bygone days when airports were full of hustle and bustle, there were some places, some seating areas in the terminal that were more prized than others. The seats in or around the phone charging sockets. In some fancy modern airports, there are sockets every few feet, and Wi-Fi too. In older airports, you could tell exactly where these charging points were by the crowds of people all gathered around one spot, trying desperately to get charged up before their battery died. God forbid the device might shut down on them and they would have to lift up their eyes, look around and actually engage the person sitting beside them in real life conversation. And it wouldn't matter how advanced and snazzy your phone or device was. If you don't regularly plug it into a charging point, it's not going to be of any use. The 20-year-old Nokia phone with a dead battery is every bit as useful as the latest gadget-filled smartphone with a dead battery. Apart from the charge point for too long, your device can do nothing. In the Gospel today, Jesus uses different imagery to say something similar about our connection to him. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Finally, in Ireland this week, we got some long-awaited good news about the gradual lifting of restrictions and opening up of the country after a very long winter and spring. It has been Christmas since this lockdown has been imposed on us. The pandemic has kept us sacramentally apart from the Lord. So, of course, most welcome is the fact that we can return to Mass again come May the 10th. We, the clergy, have greatly missed you these past five and a half months. And I know that many of you have greatly missed being here and being able to receive the Holy Eucharist, which is our spiritual food, essential food for us Catholics, without which we begin to spiritually wilt away. We have been spiritually famished. In the Gospel, we hear Jesus say how essential it is for us to be united to him like a vine branch to the vine plant. The sap and life that flows from and through the vine flows into and gives life, strength and fruitfulness to the vine branch. And should that branch be broken off from the vine, it doesn't matter if it's left sitting right beside the vine. Without that life-giving and nourishing connection to the vine, it begins to wither up, dry out and die away. I know by speaking to many of you, being forcibly broken off from the Mass due to the restrictions imposed on public worship has left you feeling spiritually withered up. You have digitally remained close to the vine. You have joined online for Mass. You have joined online for rosaries, prayer times and teachings. But it isn't the same as being connected in person. When we might be sick, or for a short period of time, joining online will keep us going. But when it becomes the new normal of how we worship God and draw life from him, then it just doesn't have the same spiritual impact and engagement nor nourishment. As a priest, I have found it difficult to offer Mass online day after day here without a congregation. But I was still privileged to be at the Mass and to receive the Eucharist. Well done to you for sticking with it, 
even though it was undoubtedly a hard experience for you to fully enter into. Soon we will be able to return to the public celebration of Mass and thank God for that. Some might hold off still for a few weeks more because they're still a bit nervous and that's okay for now. But unfortunately, there may well be people who will never return to Mass. The pandemic and all these restrictions might well have caused them to give up on Mass. Hopefully, they will have a change of heart. And of course, long before the pandemic, the majority of Catholics in this country had already given up on going to Mass. But even in the midst of this past year's difficulties, God was present and ever on the move. Many hearts have been reignited with faith and trust in the Lord. Some people who had abandoned most, if not all, their Catholic practice found themselves joining weekly, even daily Mass, or joining with online rosaries. Sometimes whole families have returned to the practice of daily prayer in the home. You see, even in dark times, the light of Christ is there and bringing about a great good for souls. If anyone listening to me is in that category of being stronger in their faith and prayer commitments now than they were before the pandemic, then I would invite you to consider now fully re-engaging with your faith, fully re-engaging with the Mass and sacraments of the Church. Maybe you've been away from confession for a long time. Come, reconnect with the merciful Jesus in that sacrament. Online, you will find many helpful videos and explanations of how to make a good confession, to prepare and encourage you if you're a little bit nervous and don't know where to begin. And if, before the pandemic, Mass was something you seldom, if ever, took seriously or attended, I invite you to make your return. Do not be afraid to return. Do not be afraid of what others might say or think about your return. As we open up again, we would love it if you would begin to take up a pew for yourself Sunday after Sunday. This is your spiritual home. Let the Mass be your spiritual heart once more. With this invitation in mind, I would like to focus on the first reading of the Mass today from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, or as we now know him, St. Paul, had been the first great enemy of the Church. He had raided Christian homes and carried off to prison those who believed in Jesus. For that first generation of Christians, Saul was a man to be feared. Even when he converts and becomes a Christian himself, they don't fully believe that it's genuine. These were good people, strong believers. Many of them had met or known Jesus personally during his earthly life. But it is very easy to write people off. Very easy to say or think, a leopard never changes its spots. They were afraid of Saul and they were reluctant to welcome him with open arms. Barnabas, however, steps in. He takes charge of Paul and introduces him to the community and to the apostles. Barnabas became Paul's doorway into the church. Can I appeal to all those who strongly believe in the message of Jesus Christ? Please be a Barnabas. In these days, we need you to be a Barnabas. Conversations may happen in the coming weeks with unlikely people who will be testing the waters to see how welcome they might be if they do indeed turn up back at Mass. You might not know it, but in the midst of this pandemic, Jesus has been knocking on many doors and many hearts, and there are many who have opened up their souls to him, perhaps for the first time in a long time. Barnabas's name means 
son of encouragement. So you be a son or daughter of encouragement. Be a Barnabas to these people. Encourage them, lead them, and offer to introduce or reintroduce them to the worshipping community. Explain to them how they can arrange their place at Mass, or better still, you arrange it for them. Be a Barnabas. Without Barnabas' intervention, Saul might never have been able to become Paul. Without Barnabas, Paul might just have always floated around the edges of the church, not knowing if he was really welcome, not knowing how he could fit in. Barnabas introduced him to the church community, and the rest, as they say, is history. And what a glorious history it was when the first great persecutor of the church became its first great evangelizer. To those considering a return to the full practice of your faith, but unsure if you're welcome or worthy enough, it is up to our community to make you welcome. It is up to the Lord to make you worthy. And he shed all his blood for you. So I don't think you should spend too much time pondering about how bad you are and unworthy of second chances. St. Paul started out as Saul. He hated the gospel. He hated Christians. He hated Christ. And he did everything in his power to get rid of them all. But God rich in mercy, looked upon him with great love. Christ took this great enemy of his and he made him one of his closest and most cherished friends and co-workers. Saul was completely cut off from Christ, but Saul became Paul and he became full of Christ. You are not Saul and you won't be St. Paul. But whoever you are, God is not finished with you yet. In fact, if you come back to him, you will certainly find he has so much more in store for you. And the best is yet to come. Apart from Jesus, I can do nothing. With Jesus, all things are possible.